Shalom. This is GMS on and sit downs coming back with a lesson. First off and foremost, I would like to give all praises, glory, and the highest honor to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakakudash, double honors to the other boss of Great Millstone, GMS, for teaching us this truth. Peace and salutations to the elect out there spreading this word in society and the truth. Um, another live lesson. Um, this video is going to be named. <laughs> Proof we will have slaves in the kingdom. You know, uh, certain people sometimes uh, ask, you know, uh, where can I see that we will that the Israelites are going to have slaves, servants in the kingdom? You know, um, so you know to answer that question, I just go into this life lesson. You know, I want to say, Slaki, I don't have my garment. You know, the location where I am, I didn't bring my garment. I forgot. Uh, I forgot my garment at home. But, uh, you know, just going in, into the, the scriptures, just flowing with the spirit, you know, we're just going to go hit some uh, points first before we're going to bring out the actual scriptures that uh, really are really obvious, you know, in a way that you can you can say and understand like, yeah, OK, the Israelites are going to have, you know, servants, slaves, so to speak, in the kingdom. So uh, this is uh, Daniel, Daniel chapter 2, um, starting with verse 44. Um, and the days of these kings shall the Most High, and in the days of these kings shall the Most High of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. You see, so that's the first point. Is the first point we're gonna hit is that when the kingdom of Israel comes, this kingdom is not gonna be divided. It's not gonna be divided over the nations. You know, it's not gonna uh, be a joint rulership. It's not gonna be like everyone has in mind. Uh, uh, the uh, heaven, so to speak, all nations are one. No, because first off and foremost, the Most High is not about that. All the nations being one, the Most High has separated the nations. Um, let me grab that scripture real quick. <clears throat> uh, this is uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 33, verse, verse 11. In much knowledge, Yahweh had divided them and made their ways diverse. You see? So the Most High has, has divided the nations. You know, and uh, that happened from, uh, from when the man Peleg, you know, in the Hebrew Palak, came on the on the scene uh, which his name uh, in itself means to the uh, to um, to divide to separate you know uh, to divide the nations because that's what happened in that time because in that time you had the Tower of Babel you know which by which the people were divided because the most I was not having it that everyone was speaking the same language everyone wanted to come together and 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 mingle among each other so the most I divided them you know, so that's what this name Peleg means, uh, because he was on the scene at that time. So let me read Daniel again. <clears throat> Daniel chapter two, verse forty-four. In those in the days of these kings, shall the power of heaven set up a kingdom, you know, which is the kingdom of heaven, which shall never be destroyed. You know, and a certain theologic uh, theologians they say yeah, this this already happened. How can this already happen? How can this already have been happen if we are not in those times? If we are not in those uh, in those um, in that state of mind of the kingdom, you know, we are not in that state of mind of the kingdom. If if this would be the kingdom, there would be servants, you know, uh, the world would be in peace. There would uh, wouldn't be no wars. You see, um, we would be uh, perfectly. Uh, we would be perfectly able to keep the Sabbaths, you know, the law, statutes, and commandments would be uh, uh, grifted in our minds. You know, that's not the case. So, you know, what these Edomites say, that's completely off. <clears throat> so it says, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, 
and it shall stand forever. You know, and all these kingdoms is talking about the statue that you read about in um, in Daniel chapter two, which uh, it has the golden head Nebuchadnezzar, which represents the Babylonian Empire. You know, then it has the silver, the silver uh, uh, breast, which represents the Medio Persian Empire. Then you have the tithe of brass which represents the Greek Empire, the Iron Legs represents the um, Roman Empire, and we are in the time now of the, uh, the Ten Toes, the feet of part iron, part clay, you know, which represents that this kingdom is unstable. Everyone is, is uh, uh, you know, it's a divided kingdom, but the, uh, there's uh, di um, um, dividing among these nations. They cannot, they cannot deal with each other. You know, just like how iron doesn't stick to clay, you know. So, um, this kingdom which is going to be set up is going to destroy all these other kingdoms. Because all these former kingdoms are set up inside of this kingdom that we are living in right now. You know, you see Bo Babylonian culture, you see Egyptian culture, you see um, uh, Medio persian culture, you know. Because this last kingdom has taken all of those things, all of those idol-worshipping things. You know, from these uh, from these um, uh, former kingdoms, but that's not gonna be in the kingdom of of, uh, of Israel, man. In the kingdom of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, that all, all all those things are gonna be consumed. You know, but the point of the scripture is that the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It's gonna be left to the Israelites. It's not gonna be joint rulership. We're not gonna be, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, let's all become one, and now we are one nation. No, that's that's not gonna be the case, you know. And to prove that, we go to Acts, chapter one, verse six, and it says, "When they, when they therefore were come together, the disciples to Yahushai, they asked of him, Yahushai, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again?" The kingdom to Israel, you see. So it, it's it's about Israel. Uh, is the kingdom gonna be restored to Israel? It doesn't say to the whole world. It doesn't say to all the nations, all the all the people that live in this world. No, it says, "Shall thou restore the kingdom to Israel?" Now, who is Israel? The Negros, Latinos, and Indianos. You know, and the confusion of faces scattered uh, abroad in this kingdom. You know. People that might look like Chinese, people that might look like uh, like uh, so-called white people, people that might look like like um, uh, Hamites, you know, those whose um, lineage goes back to the man Israel, you know, who uh, who um, was called Jacob before that, you know. So here you see, this kingdom is gonna be given to the Israelites. And that's an important thing to begin with, you know, because um, if you already have in mind that you no, know, everyone is going to be the same, everyone is going to be in one love and unity in the kingdom, all the nations together, then of course you're not going to understand that there are going to be uh, servants and slaves in the kingdom, of course. So this is um, Romans chapter 9. Let me start at 1. I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. You know, the Apostle Paul references that he has continual sorrow in his heart. For what? For I could wish that myself were accursed from uh, from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So, um, Apostle Paul is saying like, yeah, I, I wish it was was me that died for for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, you know, instead of Yahweh Shai, that he could have gone on the cross and suffered for his people, for the for their forgiveness of sins, for their remission of sins. So it says, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, for my brethren, my kinsmen means family members, according to the flesh. According to the flesh, so Christians like to say uh, there is something called spiritual Israelites. Well, there is not because it's according to the flesh. It's according to your lineage. It's according to your DNA. You know, it's according to that. It's it, it's not according to how you feel. You know, just like how stupid it is in this in this kingdom that we live in, 
Esau says, if you feel like a woman, but you are a man, you can be a woman. That doesn't make sense. You grown, you you born as a man, so you a man. You cannot change that, you know. Or a Chinese man that says, I I feel like I'm a I'm a I'm a so-called white person. That doesn't make sense. You a Chinese man, you know. You can't be an American all of a sudden, you know. Um. So it says, who are Israelites to whom pertained the adoption? Let me read it again. First three. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Yahweh Shai for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. So it's according to the flesh. Who are Israelites? So the Israelites are forgiven for their sins by the death of Yahweh Shai. And Apostle Paul is saying like, yeah, he wishes that it was him, you know, instead of the Lord. But, you know, he knew, he knew what had to happen. So he's referring to the Israelites. To whom pertained the adoption. So the Israelites are adopted back to Yahweh Basham Yahushai. You know, because the most I turned is back to us. Uh, he, he said um, um, he said in um, Hosea. Let me grab that real quick. It's a good point to bring out. To give you the understanding of why the Heavenly Father had to adopt us back. And he adopted us back through Yahweh Shai. So it says, um, Hosea chapter 1 verse 9. Then said the Most High, call his name Lo, Lo Ami. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. So Lo Ami in the Hebrew, La Aimea. La Aimea means not my people. So the Most High said at a certain point, these are not my people. You know. Uh, verse 10, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. So we're still going to multiply. We're still going to be out there, you know, uh, uh, in the four corners of the earth, looking like different nations, but still multiplying. You know, Israel is not being, uh, is not, um, is not going to be destroyed. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured, nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said, Unto them, ye are not my people, there shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living power. You see, so um, um, Muslims and, and, uh, and uh, certain uh, uh, Christians, they they like to say at the most high, it's not dealing with, with Israel no more. He's dealing with spiritual Israelites, real Christians now, or he's not there or, or the Muslims like to say, yeah, he cast off Israelites. And uh, he's dealing with uh, with uh, with Muslims now. That's pure pure garbage, man. The only reason that these Muslims say that is because they know that Surah Al Baqarah, um, two, first, uh, one hundred and twenty two in the Quran says that the Most has chosen his people uh, Israel, which he favors among uh, above all the nations. So they need to come back, you know, and then they come out with that garbage. Anyway, the children of Israel are going to be called the sons of the living power. Verse 11. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel, which the word Jezreel in the Hebrew is Yazariah, Yazariala, which means the most has planted, because Israel is the pleasant plant. You know, which uh, which it speaks of in uh, Isaiah chapter 6, I believe. I Isaiah chapter 5. You know, so it's uh, the kingdom of Israel is going to be great. The kingdom of of, of, of um, Judah is going to be great. You know, those are the people that are going to be joined together again. You know, and become one again. Because we are one nation. The Negroes, Latinos, and Indianos, we are one nation. So we're going to come back together. So it says, um, back in Romans chapter 9, verse 4, who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption. So now you understand what the adoption means. The most I taken us back. And the glory of the covenant. And the glory. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. And the service of the most high. And the promises. So that's the point. The promises. The promises are given to, uh, to the Israelites. According to the flesh. And the service of the most high. So the most high is. Uh, the service of the Most High is given unto unto the Israelites, man. Just like when you enter a plane, you enter the plane and you're sitting in first class. 
first class in first class um uh you will have um um how you call those uh, um, stu stu stewards you know these women that that serve you food on the plane in first class you will have them come by with uh, with liquor and nice food but if you sit in second class you know they only bring you water tea and coffee you know but in first class you will get liquor you know nice foods and all kinds of things you know that shows you the second class doesn't have that service you know and here it says the most high has given the service the service of the most high is given unto the israelites you know so these heathen are those people that sit in second class you know they don't get no service like that you know because it's not given unto them and the glory and the covenant is also not given unto them you know and the, the main point that i bring this out is the promise the promise is not given unto them what is the promise the kingdom the kingdom man that's the promise and everything that comes with the kingdom you see so the the kingdom is not given unto them it's not gonna be for them it's they are not gonna rule in, in, in it you know um and to prove that even more, we go to Psalms. That's it already. Psalms 102. Uh, 105. Psalms 105. Um, verse 8. I'm going to start with verse 8. It says, He had remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. You see, the everlasting covenant, the oath, the promises made with Jacob, uh, uh, with um, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, the covenant, the promise is made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see, it doesn't refer to all these other nations in between, you know. Um, um, verse 11, saying unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. So the lot of the inheritance of Israel. I already said it, the lot of the inheritance goes to Israel. It doesn't go to all these other nations. So now you have uh, the now you have it uh, grafted into your mind that Israel is gonna get the kingdom. Israel is gonna be the head. Israel is gonna uh, is gonna be uh, um, the top nation in the kingdom, which has already been prophesied, you know, in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. Just like how the curses were prophesied, how how they were uh, how, how they would uh, consume us, you know, before those curses, it was uh, it was being explained that how we would live if we would keep the law, you know. Um, just one uh, one verse in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, verse one, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligent unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to obtain and to do all His commandments which I command thee this day. That Yahweh, thy power, will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. So what's going to happen when we enter into the kingdom? <clears throat> we are going to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You know, and to whom were the laws given? To the Israelites. So this is the scripture that shows you that we're going to keep the laws 100% perfect. Which, which, um, which confirms that we are going to be set up above all the nations. This is Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. And I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. So uh, the Heavenly Father is going to bring us in our own land. Not You don't have to buy a plane ticket to go back to Israel where all these heathens still dwell. Israel is going to be destroyed too by nuclear fire, you know. Um, for I will take you from among the heathen. Shows you that we are among the heathen too. And gather you out of all countries, shows you that we are among all the heathen in all countries uh, across the world. And will bring you into your own land, which is Israel, the lot of our inheritance. You know, Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. 
and a new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. <clears throat> and I will, will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statues. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them, you see? So this is the point. Ye shall keep my judgments, ye shall keep my statues and do them. So when we do them perfectly, we, we, we will get a, a fleshly heart. We are not going to be able to go off. So if we are not able to go off, we will be uh, uh, set up above all the nations. You know, we will be the rulers of the, of the planet earth. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, Abraham and Isaac. And ye shall be my people, and I will be your, fa your, your power. I will also save you from all your uncleanness, and I will call uh, for the corn, and will increase it, and lay no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of the tree, and increase of the field, that ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the heathen. You see, so we're going to be on top, man. We're going to be the, the rulers of the kingdom, uh, uh, which is promised, which is given, which shall be given unto us. So this earth... Really, this earth is, 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 is created for us, man. You know, one last scripture to point that out is um, Second Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 6. Uh, starting with verse 54. And after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all. The heathens plus the Israelites come of Adam. Um, of him come we all. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Also the chosen people come from Adam. You know. Um, all this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. You see, so the world is created to, for the sakes of the Israelites, man. The world is created for the sakes of the Israelites. The Negroes, Latinos, and Indianos. Um, let me read it again, five, verse 55. And this, and this have I sp spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. You know, let me jump to um, verse 57. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen which have been, which have ever been reputed as nothing, nothing have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? So this, these are the words of Ezra. You know, he said, like, the world is created for us. Why are we in this predicament? You know, how long is this going to last? And now we are even closer to the to the time that this is all going to be changed man the kingdom is going to be given into the hands of the of the negroes latinos and indianos you know and we are going to rule it forever and ever and ever there shall be no end to the rulership of the of the negroes latinos and indianos so now you see the kingdom is going to be given it unto the israelites so there is not going to be a, a, a joint rulership and not everyone is going to be one people it's still going to be divided and the and the negros latinos and indianos the, the true israelites the biblical israelites are going to be set on top you know like it says here isaiah chapter 14 verse 1 for yahweh will have mercy on jacob and will yet choose israel and set them in their own land the heavenly father is going to bring us back to our own land and the stranger shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The, the Israelites, uh, basically the Israelite foreigners uh, that don't know that they are Israelites, um, they are going to be joined uh, to the house of Israel. You know, we're going to be, be one again. Like I said, the only uh, nation that is, uh, the only nations that are, are going to uh, become one again are the nations am among whom Israel is scattered. You know, and Israel... Uh, became many nations like it was prophesied already to to um, abraham that uh, he shall become a multitude of nations now if you look at it the the israelites are a multitude of nations if you look at um, issachar issachar the mexicans 
um, uh, Manasseh. Manasseh are the Cubans. Um, Simeon. Simeon are the Dominicans. Uh, Gad, the, the Native Americans, Judah, the uh, American Negroes, plus Judah, Benjamin, and Levi is, is scattered among the, the, the Caribbean islands. You know, in, in, in South America, you have um, you have uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi too. Because when when we were in the West, in the West Coast, you have uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. We know certain West Africans that refer to themselves as Gad. And also Israel is scattered uh, uh, around, man. Um, but like I said, if you if you find Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in in West African countries, in the Caribbean, in in South America, you know that that already makes multitude of nations, man. You know because they refer to themselves as as people from Ghana, uh, Nigerians, Suriname people, uh, 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 French Guyana, um, Arubian, you know Curacao. Um, Saint Vincent. You have all these, uh, all these islands and places where where you have a mixed multitude of people that refer to themselves as this nation. So we became a multitude of nations. So we are gonna be come together, and the Most High is gonna put us in our own land, and the, and the strangers are gonna be joined unto the man of the Lord. You know, uh, verse two, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yah, in the land of the Lord, for servants and handmaids. So we're going to take these heathen nations and we're going to possess them, you know. Um, Khan, uh, let me read it again. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. So we are going to take them, these heathens, and bring them to our place. And the house of Israel, the house of Israel, shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. What is a servant? A slave is a servant, a handmaid. And, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. So it says, and they shall take them captives whose, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. Now the point is quite simple. Who have oppressed us? You know, who have who has oppressed us? Um, you you got certain nations, you know, that like to say we we did not have a hand in in no captivity. You know, I'm I'm from Scandinavia. I'm from Finland. I'm from right Russia. I'm from Ukraine. I had, we had no 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 part in in slavery, man. This goes thousand uh, thousand years back, man. This goes back all the way back, man. If your lineage goes back to Esau, you did have a part in it, man. You know. And to go further into it, Second Maccabees already explains you. Like, listen, man. Or First Maccabees. Let me grab First Maccabees first. First Maccabees chapter two verse ten. What nation had not had a part in in her kingdom and got enough her spoils? That's basically a sarcastic question because every all the nations had have had um, um, a part in uh, in the kingdom of Israel. They all took of our, uh, our they all took our stuff. They even took us. You know, all these nations have uh, had a hand in it, and the only the only way a nation would be, would be not guilty if they would would have come during slavery to the so-called white man, make war with the so-called white people. And the people that had us in slavery to redeem us. But the scripture says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, And Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. We nobody says, Yeah, I'm gonna go back to my fatherland, Israel. Yeah, nowadays, of course, because Israel is, is waking up, but back then not, when we were still asleep. And thou shalt see it no more again. There ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no one shall buy you. That word no one shall buy you goes into redeem. You know, if you if you bought this card for your PlayStation, you know, which says it has 25 euros on it, then you type in the code and you redeem your money. You see? So it means to take back or to buy back, you know. So if these nations wanted to be um, uh, um, justified, if these uh, nations wanted to be uh, uh, not wanted to be guilty, then they should have redeemed us. 
they should have uh, delivered us from out of the hand, hands of these people that wanted to us, enslave us. That would be a righteous thing, but they did not. So all these nations are guilty, and even if we go back into the history, it shows that all these nations have, have gotten off our spoils, like it says also here. You know, and then also in First Maccabees chapter 13, First Maccabees chapter 13, verse 6, Doubtless I will avenge my nation and the sanctuary and our wives and our children, for all the heathen have gathered to, to destroy us of very malice. You see, all the heathen have, have gathered together, man. All the heathen. Another scripture, Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 25. You know, because you can't get around it. You can't get around it, man. You can say, yeah, my family... They were farmers. Well, this goes far, far, far more back than you think, man. Your family were farmers, you know. And who was they? Who was they? Uh, who was they giving food to? To slave masters, probably. You know, it's all a, it's all a link. It's all linked together. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter ten, verse twenty-five. Um, Pour out thy fury upon the heathen that know thee not, and upon uh, and upon the families that call not on thy name. For they have eaten up Jacob and devoured him and consumed him. And have made his habitation, habitation desolate. You see, so these heathens have devoured us. These heathens have, uh, uh, um, have taken us, have uh, consumed us. You know, and they do, they never called upon the name of Yahweh Basham Yahshai. So... Like like how the service of the Most High is not for them, they're not serving the Most High neither. You know, it's vice versa. You know, just like how we, the lot of our inheritance is Yahweh, Barsham, Yahushai, and and Yahweh's inheritance is is Israel. You know, so they have consumed us. All these heathens have consumed us. So, the answer is quite simple. What's the payback for that? Have they paid for it? No, these heathens have not paid for that. They still living living peace uh, peace uh, peacefully. Well, except the Ishmaelites, you know, Ishma, Ishma, the Ishmaelite countries are getting bombed the shit out of. But that's good for them, you know. We don't give no shit about that, you know, because the worst thing that happened upon a planet Earth happened unto Israel, man. To no one else. So let's go to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter um, 12, verse 9. This is Zechariah chapter 12, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against it, Jerusalem. So we already read. We just read all the nations have come against Jerusalem. So the Most High is going to seek to destroy them. You know? And how is he going to destroy them? I can easily just read verse 8, the thing above it. Um, verse 8, Zechariah 12 and 8. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, which represents the people of Israel. And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as the Most High, as the angel of Yahweh before them. So the house of David, the chosen man, the 144,000, are going to have power as an angel, man. You know, we're going to turn back to our to our... Um, angelic uh, uh, power again, not our angelic form, because you have celestial and ter terrestrial beings. You know, we're gonna stay terrestrial, but we're gonna have the angelic power, you know. Um, and the house of David shall be as the most high, as the power, as the angel of the most high before them. And it shall come to pass that in that day. That I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. How is he gonna? How is he gonna destroy them? By his right hand, and his right hands, his right hand is the children of Israel. Like it says in Second Ezra, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one. Second um, Ezra, uh, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-one. Like as they do this day. It's like, a, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also, and recompense in their bosom. Thus said Yahweh the Most High. You see, so the Most High is going to recompense. The Most High is going to pay back these heathens that have touched uh, touched us, and that, that have done all these things unto us. With what? With destruction, but also with slavery. You know? 
My right hand shall not spare the sinners. My right hand, who is the right hand of the heavenly father, his men, his chosen men of Israel, shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not seize over them uh, that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So by his right hand, he's going to recompense into the bosom of these heathens. Um, so, um, yeah, Zechariah chapter, uh, chapter 12, yeah, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 9, And it shall come to pass that in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. So they're going to be destroyed and they're going to, basically, they're just going to get changed around their necks, man. Like it says in um, in Psalms, um, Psalms one hundred and forty nine, verse five. Let the saints be joyful in the in glory. Who are the saints? Let me read one uh, Psalms one hundred and forty eight, verse fourteen. Uh, he also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye Yahweh Shem Yahushai. So you hear, you see. The saints of the Heavenly Father are His people, the Israelites. So it says, uh, Psalms 149, verse 5, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with feathers of iron. You see, so the change feathers of iron are gonna be all these uh, these uh, these um, you know uh, shekels. All these shekels are gonna they're gonna be binded up. You know the the kings and the nobles of the heathen, because basically the rest of these heathens are gonna be destroyed. You know the the kings the kings and the nobles and the and the uh, and the 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 riches the rich people. Uh, that basically had the most power in 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 enslaving us and in, and and um, 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 destroying us. They are gonna get their chains around the neck, and they're gonna be, you know, um, ex ex uh, how you say that, exported into the kingdom, man, with that with those chains, and then they're gonna be uh, under continual employment, which continual employment is slavery, man. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron. To execute upon them judgments written. You see, it's all written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. You see, this honor have all his saints. Like we just read in 2nd Ezra 15 and 16, uh, 15 and 22. That his right hand shall not spare the sinners. You know, which also represent our own people. That do wicked in the sight of the heavenly father. So from there we go to uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, verse 27. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Let me let me start at um, 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my word works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. You see? So the man of the Lord that keep continuing in this word, in this truth, the Most High is going to give them power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a pot. Father, shall they be broken into shivers, even I received, even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star. It's like he that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said unto the churches. You see? So these men that pulled through. These men that continue in the faith, uh, that uh, keep serving Yahweh Shai even um, through the times that are coming, they're gonna be the rulers, man. You know, and they they're gonna have servants and handmaids and slaves. Um, this is uh, Psalms chapter two. Um, Psalms chapter two. Let me start at uh, verse seven. I will declare, I will declare the decree Yahweh had said unto me, Thou art my son, referring to Yahweh Shai. This day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth 
for thy possession. You see, so what does it mean to possess to possess people? You if you have people in their in your possession, you can let them do whatever you desire them to do, man. They are your possession. So that's what's gonna happen into the king in the kingdom, man. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. If you desire to break their skulls with a rod of iron, you can do that. It's your possession. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. <laughs> you see? You know, but this is referring to Yahweh Shai. This is what Yahweh Shai is going to receive because Yahweh Shai is the son. And we shall be sons of the Most High. And we are going to be joined heirs with Yahweh Shai. Like it says here, Romans chapter 8, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. You see, so an heir is someone who receives who, who receives a no a joint heir is someone who receives a part of the heir. The heir is Yahweh Shai because it was been it has been prophesied in Genesis uh, that Shiloh shall come. You know what does Shiloh mean? Shayala means unto whom it is given. Now that person is Yahweh Shai unto whom it is given. So he is the heir. But we are going to be joint heirs, and a joint heir is someone that receives a part of what the person gets. You know, now Yahweh Shai gets the, the othermost parts of the earth, earth as a possession, and the heathen, he, he is going to possess them. So uh, uh, we, laboring in his truth and being glorified with Yahweh Shai, are going to get a part of what he gets, you know, and what he gets is slaves and servants, you know. City is uh, uh, the whole world to rule over. So us as servants are going to get cities to rule over, man, with people in it, palaces, you know, things that eyes and ears have not heard and seen, man. You know, so with that, you know, I'm going to close it off. First off and foremost, all praise is glory and the highest honor to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh, Shai, Ba'asham, Raka, Kudash, Shalom to the elect, you know, peace and blessings, stay strong, Akiyam, keep pushing. You know, keep meditating upon the scriptures. You know, I believe Esau is soon going to be able to, to take away our Bibles and, and to uh, rip it out of our hands if they decide to. So be prepared for things like that. You know, make sure you have these scriptures uh, um, grifted in your mind, you know, but that you can basically um, just uh, meditate upon the scriptures when you need them without having the Bible with you. You know, it's very important. So, hey, Shalom.